Good morning. Today is a very special day because it is the first ever graduation at Chesterton Academy of Ottawa. It was this month, three years ago, that I first learned that I was going to school with a class and a school of 10 other students. And my first reaction was, where will I choose my parents? But what I did not know was that the school did not have much quantity, but it had lots of quality. I could not have asked for better classmates than Benjamin, Joseph, Veronica, Krista, Rose, Constance, and Tatiana. Benjamin, without him, I would not have done as well in my math quizzes. His explanations were always very good. Joseph, well, without him, we would miss some super French presentations. Veronica, my sister, is special for all these reasons. Constance sat to my left in class, which added more balance to that side of the room, because as you all know, she was so noisy, I always had to keep her quiet. <laughs> Rose had the huge responsibility of mar marking the points for our house competitions, and those competitions, that was not a small task, because it would turn out to be very controversial, especially in history class with Dr. Gay. Then Krista is one you do not want to hang out with on April Fool's Day. I learned it the hard way. And Tatiana on a good day will give you chocolates and carrots from your garden and other goodies. And on a bad day will throw your chessboard to the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> the next year we added three new students and a half. So three students and one who showed up occasionally. But when you showed up, well, it seems like the sun was shining brighter. This class turned out to be a very talented one, since it had the school's ping pong champion with Nicholas, it had the school's chess champion with Alex, and it had the school's loudest screamer with Catherine. <laughs> and also it had the only other Real Madrid fan in the school with Angelica. So a very uh, talented class indeed. Back to the graduation class, we did it despite the pandemic and the sleepless nights writing last minute essays. But if you think that's the worst a student can suffer, then you obviously have not been to our volleyball tournament. <laughs> we did not do too well. To be fair though, the uh, school of 17 has some excuses against schools of hundred students. <coughs> Although we all have our shortcomings, we always should be mindful of our patron Chesterton. He was a very simple man. He did not go to college, he was 6'4", and weighed 300 pounds. He had a cigar in his mouth, a crumpled hat on his head, and tiny glasses pinched on the end of his nose. He did most of his writing on train stations, since he always missed the train, and he never knew when or where his next appointment was. There's a famous anecdote where he's walking with his wife, and he turns to her suddenly and asks, Am I at Market Harbor where I ought to be? So his wife had to deal with all the details of his life since he was unable to do it himself. However, this absent-minded, overgrown man who laughed at his own jokes and amused children at birthday parties wrote a book called The Everlasting Man, which converted uh, a young atheist named C.S. Lewis. He wrote a book called The Napoleon of Notting Hill, which inspired Michael Collins to lead a movement for Irish independence, which would make the Zwickers proud. He also wrote a piece in the Illustrated London News that inspired Gandhi to lead a movement to end British colonial rule in India. And Etienne Gisson, a famous lunatic scholar, which we had the chance to study with Mr. Luce in philosophy, said of Chesterton's book on St. Thomas, I consider Chesterton's book on St. Thomas as being, without possible comparison, the best book ever written about St. Thomas." End quote. And yet, hardly anyone knows who Chesterton is, and it's, he's not very much taught in school nowadays. The point that I'm trying to make is that it is the little things that matter the most. Chesterton's legacy is not marked by fame so much as it is marked by results and by the people he encountered. He always did what Mrs. Connell would call his duty of the moment. I happen to be listening to that class. <laughs> if there's anything you want to take away from today, remember that to leave a legacy or to achieve greatness is not to gain money, fame, or recognition. 
but rather like Chesterton, it is to be it is to be those with whom you cross paths with a little more happiness, hope, and meaning. Our time to together in class will not be remembered by grades and popularity, but rather by our relationships. Saint Teresa of Lisieux said, "Nothing is small in the eyes of God. Do everything you do with love." Last but not least. I would like to thank the people who made this moment possible. First of all, the board of directors who have put this school together in a brief amount of time. I would, I would have loved to thank each teacher individually, but I just already see some people yawning, so I'll just do. I would like to thank Mrs. Connell, whose classes I'm going to miss, or as she calls it, the tangents. Then I would like to thank Mr. Muse, whose philosophy and French classes I will forever remember. I loved handing in my homework to him in online class because he had a special method called pigeonhole. I would also like to thank Dr. Gay and Mrs. Gay for all the work that they have done to get Chesterton off the ground. And last but not least, I would like to thank the best headmaster in the world, who has put up with a lot, but always with a smile on his face, and that's Mr. Stevens. He has taught me what a treasure Catholicism is, and he also taught me a little about fashion. In fact, the socks that I'm wearing now, I just I don't know if you can see them, but they're very much in the spirit. <laughs> Finally, for the graduates, we are now entering the battlefield. So as gladiator would tell the soldiers before the battle, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Thank you and have a wonderful day.